my best friend drunkenly confessed to me. CJ almost kissed me. If you told my high school self this, I would probably be jumping with joy. Ecstatic would be an understatement. Especially after waiting for this very moment my entire life. CJ and I had been friends since kindergarten. We unboxed our first Lego sets together. We played our first PlayStation games side by side. We played our first football games together. We were inseparable. And that was both a good and a bad thing. A good thing because I never wanted to be away from him. A bad thing because I watched his life from the sidelines as he fell in love with different girls, unaware of my budding feelings for him. But this time, my college self could not stomach the thought of CJ kissing me. And it was not because I didn't love him anymore. It was because he was with Eliza Lee, a fellow student of ours at Hayward College, and CJ was drunk as a skunk. I would never do that to my best friend, so when he drunkenly confessed to me, I dismissed it, although my heart was racing like never before. I love you, H, CJ slurred. I've loved you since we were in high school. Hell, I think I've loved you even before that, and I just never admitted it. You're drunk, C, I said, putting one of his arms over my shoulder and guiding him towards his bed. We were in our dorm, and conveniently, we happened to be roommates. It was a conscious choice I made, and an obvious decision for both of us who have been thick as thieves for the longest time. Maybe, he confirmed, but that shouldn't stop me from professing my love to you, does it? He tried to lean in again as I placed him on his bed. His face was so close to mine that I could hear his breathing and smell the stench of alcohol. I looked at his lips, tempted to crush mine against him, as I had always dreamed of. But I knew better. I distanced myself, and CJ looked visibly upset. I get it. You don't love me like I love you, he pouted before burying his face in his pillow. I do, CJ. If only you knew how much I love you, I told him confidently, knowing he would not recall any of this the following morning. But I can't do this to you. I loved you romantically, but I love you as a friend first. Friends will never take advantage of their friends. You're lying, he mumbled almost incoherently. You're only using the respectful front to reject me. You know what? I'm actually glad Elsa and I broke up. I raised my eyebrow at his confusion. I was sitting across from him in my own bed, watching as he lay down. Because that means I won't feel guilty anymore about having feelings for you, he slurred. I shook my head quickly, knowing he did not know what on earth he was saying. The alcohol really did get to him this time. This time around, he hit an all-time low. Stop it, CJ. Go to bed, I reprimanded. I broke up with her for you, he said, almost incoherently, and then before I could even reply, he was knocked out and snoring. I tucked him in the bed and pulled his blanket over him before I lay down on my own. I was consumed by my thoughts for hours, thinking about how the innocent round of drinks almost turned into a disaster, although I knew his judgment was clouded by the alcohol. I could not help but feel butterflies when I thought of CJ's confession. It made me elated for a split second, and then I remembered that it would probably be the only time he would ever confess to me like that, and then the joy turned into melancholia. As expected, CJ did not remember what had happened the previous night. I was surprised though as he was not in bed when I woke up in the morning. It turned out that he was in our shared kitchen, whipping up my favorite breakfast. Good morning, H, he greeted with so much energy. You're up early, I observed. He then placed a scrumptious plate of chicken and waffles in front of me. It was my favorite food and he knew it. I found the gesture thoughtful and thanked him. After the crap I pulled last night, I owe you, he replied. I'm sorry I puked and then passed out. I was relieved at first, thinking that I had no recollection of what had happened after he puked. At least that saved me from the awkward explanation of all the things he said. It's all good, I pretended. At least you're okay now. Yeah, good thing I didn't say anything I would regret, he mentioned, searching my face for any elaboration. I chewed on my chicken awkwardly and nodded. Good thing, I repeated. Afterward, he excused himself and said he was meeting a friend. It was only later on in the day that I got ready and spotted him with his arms around Eliza that I realized that the friend he was meeting was her. They looked extremely happy and Eliza was all over him. I watched them for a few seconds before CJ waved towards me and I approached them. I greeted Eliza but as usual she had that spiteful look on her face. She had never been welcoming towards me and I always had the feeling that she secretly despised me but had no choice but to deal with me since I was CJ's best friend. However, CJ constantly reassured me that Eliza liked me. Her nasty stares told me otherwise, though. Nonetheless, I tried to put on a joyful face. After all, CJ looked bright and cheerful, a stark juxtaposition to his state last night. As his best friend, I suppose my job was to just support him in whatever made him happy, even if that means being cordial with Eliza. We've made up, announced CJ. I was just overwhelmed with emotions last night and made impulsive decisions, but we're good now. He then kissed Eliza's forehead lovingly while she was just staring straight at me. I was tempted to look away. You would think that after all this time I would have gotten over the sight of them, but I loved CJ too much to overcome the jealousy. I tried not to show it too much, though, lest Eliza or CJ noticed. 
Good for you guys. I'm happy for you, see? I replied, forcing a smile. My comment made Eliza's eyes turn into slits, clearly examining my demeanor. Thanks, H, said CJ. I head to class now. See you both later. CJ then gave Elsa a quick peck before scurrying away. Surprisingly, Elsa did not follow him, and instead, I found her watching me, while my gaze followed CJ. I know what you're doing, Henry, she said menacingly. You were the one that got Henry to break things off with me last night, weren't you? I was perplexed. What? No way. I didn't do such a thing, and besides, why would I? I asked. Eliza rolled her eyes and folded her arms. She really was the epitome of a mean girl. Her stance could almost rival that of Regina George. I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work, she snarked. CJ may not see it, but I'm way too smart to fall for your act. What are you talking about? I questioned. Go find another man to pine for. He's mine. The next time I see you giving those lovey-dovey eyes for him, you're dead meat, she threatened before stomping away. Over the course of the next few days, CJ must have noticed me drifting apart from him because suddenly he surprised me with my favorite coffee from a nearby cafe and some breakfast. Clearly, breakfast was our thing, and I always looked forward to them because it was the only time in the day when Eliza's presence did not bother us. However, as of late, I thought of what Eliza said and reflected. If I had been too invasive in their relationship, after all, I may have loved him first, but the fact is that CJ was in a relationship, and it was not with me. For you, CJ offered me a single stem of a flower. He knew how much I liked putting those in our dorm, and it gave it a fresher vibe. He always made sure to pick up a flower or two when we bought coffee outside. I thanked him graciously for the flower, the breakfast, and the coffee. Real thoughtful of you, I noted. You're avoiding me, and I thought you couldn't resist a hearty breakfast. What's the matter, H? He questioned. So he noticed. Nothing, I told him. What is it? He pried. If you don't tell me, I'm going to tickle you into oblivion. I denied that there was anything wrong. The last thing I wanted was to create a necessary drama between him and Eliza. Undeniably, she was extremely dramatic, and based on what CJ had been ranting about, she was also borderline manipulative. But I trusted CJ's judgment. He was old enough, after all. If he was happy with her, I would force myself to be happy for him too. Nothing, I asserted. Oh, you're really not telling me, he replied before tickling me on both sides of my body, making me shriek and laugh. He was also chuckling, and for the first time in a while, I saw a genuine twinkle in his eyes and a wide-mouthed smile. Not the type of closed mouth smile he usually flashed whenever he was with Eliza, but a warm, genuine, wide smile. He continued tickling me for a while, and I just wanted to stay in that position forever, being wrapped in his arms and having the best time with him. In the midst of our fun, Eliza casually walked in and CJ and I separated at once. Hey, L greeted CJ. As usual, Eliza gave me a side eye and I merely nodded to acknowledge her presence. Hey, ready for class? She asked CJ, and before I knew it, they were walking out. Later, H, CJ said as he closed the door. A few moments later, the door opened once again and I was about to greet CJ again, but then I turned around. It was Eliza. She looked displeased as usual. Surprisingly, she closed the door and I knew immediately that I was going to get another round of her earful of sermon. Get away from CJ, she said directly. I won't ask again. She was glaring daggers at me, and I do not know what went through me, but I returned her malicious stare. No, I said firmly. CJ is my best friend. Nothing you do or say will change that. You don't know what I'm capable of, she asserted. You're going to regret this. Why are you so threatened by me? I asked, genuinely curious. You got everything. They dub you an it girl. Are you kidding? Have you seen the way you and CJ look at each other? If he and I haven't been in a relationship, I think both of you are gay. Well, you unmistakably are, but leave him out of this. Don't bring him down with you, she shouted. My eyebrows furrowed. What did she mean about the way CJ and I looked at each other? Her threats still could not get to me. No, CJ is my best friend, I repeated, and then grabbed her arm so softly in order to plead with her. Please, let's just be amiable for his sake. His sake? Oh, I don't think so. I think you just want to be close to him because you want him, she accused. You're going to regret this, you gay fool. I did not think much of Eliza's threats, thinking that they were just empty warnings and that she was merely jealous of the friendship that I shared with CJ. I was walking to class when I bumped into a hard body, and I could not mistake the shade of pink for anyone else. It was Eliza, and dramatically she fell to the ground. Our collision was not even that hard, and I apologized profusely, even helping her pick up her books. How low of you, Henry, she berated, catching the attention of people around us. Perplexed, I stood up, and so did she. What? I asked. Forcing yourself onto me wasn't enough. Now you're trying to physically hurt me? She said, Eliza dramatically wrapping her arms around herself as though to protect her body from me. Excuse me? I asked. At this point, the other students were starting to gather around us, curious about the commotion. 
What? You're going to pretend like you didn't just try to kiss me and feel me up last night? Is this what you're doing? Eliza accused. Gasps were heard all around us, and people were beginning to point and stare. Clearly, I was being villainized, and as the golden girl of the university, Eliza could do no wrong in the eyes of others. No way, I just bumped into you by accident, I insisted. Bumped into me in a wide hallway like this, Eliza said. And she had a point. Admittedly, I was not very cautious of my surrounding. Maybe you purposely bumped into me, I reasoned. Sexually forcing yourself on me wasn't enough, huh? Now you're resorting to violence and physically abusing me? Again, the statement ignited the gasps, and I was receiving some serious glares. Physically abusing you? I never even tried to kiss you. And for the record, I just grabbed your arm to talk to you yesterday. Stop with the lies, I shouted, frustrated that Eliza was attempting to ruin me. Lies? You did more than grab my arm. Explain this. She then rolled her sleeves and revealed bruising on her arm. Surely I did grab her arm yesterday, but that could no way result in such brutal injuries. The crowd seemed to get the confirmation that I did indeed hurt her, seeing as I had prefaced that I grabbed her arm. Her bruising was the icing on the cake. No way, I didn't do that. I didn't even hurt you, I defended. But it was to no avail. One guy had thrown his shoe at me, and I barely dodged it. Soon people followed, and they threw at me objects of all sizes. Get away from Eliza, said someone in the surrounding crowd. We don't tolerate abusers here, another followed. Before I knew it, students were shouting from everywhere, exiling me. I was genuinely starting to get hurt by the slurs they were throwing at me and the things they were hurling at me. In the far corner, Eliza was pretending to cry and was grasping her arm while some friends nursed her. Desperate to get away from the drama, I ran out of the exit. Later that evening, I was cooped up in my dorm when CJ walked in. I expected to hear an earful from him, especially since the news was going around that I had tried to hurt Eliza, but he simply sat next to me and rested his head against my shoulder. I'm sorry, H, he whispered. I wish I was there to defend you. I looked at him, puzzled. How did you find out that Eliza made it up, I asked. It seemed like the whole school was against me at this point, and I could hardly believe that CJ knew the better than to believe the rumors. I didn't. I just knew all along. I know you better than I know myself, H, he explained. You'd rather die than to do such a thing. I smiled and leaned against him. He then engulfed me in a hug, and I rested my head against his chest. Hearing the beat of his heart, It's so cruel, I mumbled. I don't know what I ever did to her. She just knows that I love you more than I love her. You've been with me forever, he reasoned. My heart skipped a bit. Of course, he meant that in a friendly way, but it was comical how true it was. How can you stay with her, I asked. Someone as pure and genuine as you doesn't deserve someone like her. CJ sighed. I know, she's like pure evil in your eyes. But if she wants to, Eliza can be caring. And I don't know why she's doing this. Honestly, she's going through a rough patch with her family. Maybe that's why. This still doesn't justify what she did to you. Don't worry, I will talk to her about it, he offered. I shook my head. No, don't worry about me, C, I replied. I don't want you ruining your relationship with her because of me. No, it's okay. We're due for a talk anyways. I don't know why I gave her another chance, honestly. I guess I just like the comfort and security she gives me. Like, with her, everything feels normal, you know? I just nodded, although deep in my heart, I could not help but think that he was just trying to comfort himself. Maybe staying with her allowed him to be in his own bubble of denial. Maybe he actually meant what he said to me that night, that he loved me and maybe, just maybe, he could bring himself to leave Eliza because then he would be forced to confront what he truly feels about me and what his sexuality really was. Until then, I would continue being his best friend and being there for him. I forced myself to be content with the bond we shared as I leaned into his embrace and hear the beat of his heart. Later that week, I avoided Eliza at all costs just to avoid drama, given that I was pretty much a social outcast and I could not be with CJ all the time due to our different schedules. I found myself eating lunch alone behind the bleachers in the field. It was the most secluded place in the school, and I was better off being here than being the subject of slurs and bullying in the cafeteria. I was peacefully gobbling at the sandwich I had packed when I heard a familiar voice. It was Eliza and two of her minions, Vanessa and Jenny. They were in gym clothes, so I presumed they were exercising. I did not mean to, but I overheard their conversation as I sat down on the bleachers, unaware that someone was listening in. God, that Henry guy is just insufferable, complained Eliza, and the two nodded their heads furiously. Thank God he's finished. No one's going to believe him now. I do not know what came over me, but I had thought of recording a video of them as they had their conversation. Your acting was spectacular, Eliza, complimented Vanessa. That costume makeup really did work spectacularly. Your bruise was so believable. Truly, said Jenny. 
Now everyone thinks he really did hurt you. Oh, that stupid bitch will be out of the way soon. He's no one but a sexual and physical abuser in everyone's eyes, Eliza asserted. Does CJ still like him? Asked Vanessa. Eliza rolled her eyes. Unfortunately, I think CJ still believes him. I have to find a way to discredit that stupid Henry more. I think he's gay though, and I don't think CJ wants the gay man as a roommate, right? He's probably carrying some sort of disease, Jenny agreed. I'll convince CJ somehow, Eliza reassured. Besides, that man is so gullible, soon he'll probably make me access all his finances. Oh, I smell a shopping trip coming, teased Vanessa. Girls, if I manage to lock CJ down, you best believe that I'll be getting everything and anything we want, Eliza gloated. I gasped, finally realizing that Eliza had just been using CJ for money all along. No wonder he was always preparing some grand gestures and lavish gifts for her. That fool really fell for me, didn't he? Well, girls, we better exploit all the money he has before that gay Henry takes it, Eliza asserted before she walked off with the other two girls. I was in utter disbelief. I could not believe that Eliza was using CJ for money, but I knew that he deserved to know. Besides, it was evident that he was looking for a reason to leave her, and this was it. Staring at him blatantly. And so I did what any best friend would do. I showed it CJ the video. He was clearly despondent, baffled, and furious at the same time. I should have known, he told me. She's been using me all this time. She never loved me. I gently rubbed his back as he leaned against me. You deserve better, see, I consoled. You're not at a loss here. She is. He smiled at me weakly. I really am not. In fact, she might have just done me a favor. She spared me from the heartbreak because I realized I don't love her anymore, especially not after that video. I nodded. I'm here for you. Always. I comfort him. I know. I'm forever grateful, he replied. I may have lost Eliza, but tonight just reminded me I have something that no one can take away. I have you. With this, he leaned his forehead against me, and we stared at each other's eyes for a while. I wanted to kiss him so bad, and it took everything in me not to lean in, especially since he was breathing heavily and looking ever so nervous. It was eventually CJ who broke off the contact and stood up, ready to leave our dorm. I'm going to confront Eliza, he said. I'll go with you, I offered. Deep down, I was disappointed that nothing really transpired between us, but I had to be there for him. CJ and I found Eliza in a bar surrounded by her usual crowd of popular students from the university. Of course, her little minions, Vanessa and Jenny, were also present. Eliza, CJ called out. Eliza shrieked and immediately came over to CJ to hug him and shower him with kisses. CJ rejected her advances and Eliza turned her glare at me, clearly looking for another reason to blame me for CJ's indifference towards her. What on earth are you doing here, Henry? Thinking you could score some other guy since CJ obviously doesn't want you? Teased Eliza. I bit my tongue, not wanting to start another scandal. Thankfully, CJ stepped up and spoke for me this time around. No, in fact, I'm here with Henry, because we know the truth, and I guess your so-called friends here also deserve to know exactly what kind of person you are, CJ replied, referring to all her other friends besides Vanessa and Jenny. What are you talking about, CJ? Come on, darling. Let's just dance the night away, she offered, running her hand through CJ's hair. CJ broke away from her grasp and confronted her once and for all. Dance the night away so you can run with my money after? You think flirting with me is still going to get you nice gifts? CJ challenged. Eliza pretended to look perplexed, but it was evident that she was nervous that her cover was blown. Some of her friends were already listening in on the conversation and were tuned in after hearing CJ's booming voice. What? What lies has Henry fed you now, huh? That gay asshat is still slandering me, isn't he? Eliza accused. No need for any accusations. He caught you red-handed, replied CJ, without hesitation. He then played the video of Eliza, Jenny, and Vanessa's conversation earlier that day. The music at the bar suddenly stopped, and murmurs were heard all around as people flocked to watch the video. Almost instantaneously, insults were thrown at Eliza. What a gold digger. How dare she fake that injury and let Henry take the fall. Unbelievable. This girl should be expelled. She's not only using CJ's money, but she's also framed Henry as a rapist and an abuser? Disgusting behavior. Eliza was tongue-tied, unable to defend herself when the evidence was piling right in front of her. I... I was wrong, CJ. I loved you all this time, she claimed. You never loved me. You loved my money. We're over, CJ responded. Eliza's sadness transformed into rage. You, she turned to me, almost tackling me, if CJ did not stop her. You gay asshole. You really want CJ so bad, don't you? You want him so bad that you've ruined me now. I didn't ruin you, Eliza, I said. You ruined yourself. I hate you, you AIDS-carrying son of a bitch. Go to hell, she screamed. With that, the bouncer of the bar escorted her. He assessed that they did not tolerate that kind of hate speech in the bar and wanted to banish her permanently from the premises. 
Meanwhile, Vanessa and Jenny were also shunned by the rest of the crowd, who were condemning them for tolerating Eliza's hateful behavior. Before I knew it, some of the student body also came up to me and apologized for believing Eliza's lies. I could not get myself to get mad, seeing as she could damn well put on an act. Later that evening, once we were back in the dorm, I offered CJ drinks, but he refused. Instead, he took my hand and asked if we could talk. I agreed, thinking it was about the Eliza drama. However, I was wrong. I don't want drinks to cloud my judgment, because you deserve better than that, he stated. Do you remember the night Eliza and I first broke up? I nodded. I mean, how could I forget? Clearly, CJ was nervous. He was fidgeting, which he rarely even did. What I said that night was true, H. I love you, and I've loved you for a while. I think I've known for a while now, but I just couldn't get myself to admit it. My heart was thumping so loudly against my chest in almost disbelief that CJ was confessing to me. How could this be? This is impossible, I voiced out. CJ looked devastated. I knew it. This is the end of our friendship, isn't it? My worst fear is coming true. What are you talking about? I feared that if I ever let you know how I feel, we'd be over. The truth is, I've always loved you, and I've been in denial all this time about how I feel for you and my sexuality, which is why I was so hell-bent on making my relationship with Eliza work. I thought that maybe if I fell in love with her, my feelings for you would... Before he could complete his sentence, I crashed my lips against him in the most moving, sensual kiss I have ever had in my life. Wow, I breathed, and I've loved you for a while now too. It pained me to see you with someone else, much less a girl. CJ shook his head as he rested his forehead against mine before running his hands through my hair. I can't believe it. We waited forever to confess to each other, he said. It only took a mean girl's downfall to finally get us together, I added, and he laughed. It was worth the wait, he assured me. The next day, I was called to the faculty office. Apparently, I had gotten complaints about my behavior, and one of the professors, Mr. Jasper, wanted to see me discuss the possible disciplinary behavior I could face. When I got there, Eliza was unsurprisingly seated in one of the chairs and pretending to bawl her eyes out. Mr. Jasper was the only one there, and he was attempting to console Eliza. Sit down, Henry, he said sternly. Miss Eliza here has filed a formal complaint against you, and the disciplinary committee will be investigating. She claimed that you physically assaulted her and even spread rumors about her, eventually leading to slander. I was enraged. How dare she turn this around and act like the victim? Sir, if anything, Eliza was the one caught red-handed. She admitted that she had faked the bruise from my alleged abuse and even confessed to her ex-boyfriend CJ for money, I argued. Mr. Jasper did not look convinced, and in fact, he was patting Eliza at this point. I had the two curiously, but brushed off my thoughts. Well, be prepared to defend yourself in front of the school committee, Henry. I'll get the dean. Stay here, Mr. Jasper ordered. As soon as he was out of sight and the faculty room remained clear, Eliza brushed away the tears and stood up from her seat. Gone was the vulnerable good girl, and in its place was the usual evil self. Think I'll let you off so easily? She questioned. You don't know who you're dealing with, bitch. I rolled my eyes. Look, I know I'm innocent, so just shut up and I'll wait for further instructions. The truth will come out. Eliza smirked. My version of the truth will come out, she asserted. Look, CJ won't be hurt by all this. After all, he has his family's money to cover him. He'll be fine, and besides, he has never loved me. I'm sure that me using him for his money was inconsequential. You're unbelievable. CJ deserves better, I shouted. Eliza flipped her hair. You both deserve each other. You may think that the students have sided with you, but once you get expelled, they'll be crawling back to get in my good graces. And what makes you think that I'm the only one getting expelled and not you, I challenged. Oh, let's see. Maybe because Mr. Jasper is looking out for his favorite student, she winked, clearly referring to herself. And then it clicked. Maybe that's why it was Mr. Jasper she came to and not the dean herself, because he was probably siding with her. Sleeping with a professor now, aren't you? I boldly asked. Oh, don't accuse me now. Your punishment might get worsened, she threatened. It's not an accusation if it's the truth, I replied. Eliza had an evil smile etched on her face. You're not wrong, but sorry, no time for your heroics now. Jasper will be getting the dean soon, and you'll be expelled. You'll be no one here anymore except for the guy who physically assaulted me. Except that it didn't actually happen. Suddenly, we heard a loud cough from the other side of the room. I heard everything, said Miss Monette, another professor. In fact, it confirmed what I already know. Upon seeing Mrs. Monette, Eliza started bawling at once, tried to act vulnerable once again. Drop the act, Eliza. You've been caught. In fact, I saw you and Jasper frolicking behind an empty classroom yesterday. I just couldn't expose you until I had the evidence, and now I have it, Miss Monette declared. 
How dare you attempt to ruin the reputation and the future of Henry and CJ, and now, sleeping with your professor? Miss Monette, please don't do this, pleaded Eliza. But Miss Monette was already headstrong and spilled everything to the dean at once. Ironically, Mr. Jasper escorted the dean to talk to me about my punishment, but tables were completely turned as Miss Monette revealed the conversation she just overheard between me and Eliza and the affair she discovered between Eliza and Mr. Jasper yesterday. After the whole ordeal, I was sent away while the dean dealt with the professor and Eliza. Thankfully, CJ was waiting for me just outside the faculty room and embraced me as soon as he saw me. He kissed my forehead in an attempt to comfort me. He must have seen how stressed I was. Drink, he offered. As long as you'll confess to me drunkenly again, I joked, and we both laughed and headed towards the dorm together, hand in hand. Conclusion Two months had passed since the drama. Since then, Mr. Jasper got sacked and Eliza was expelled from the university. Turns out that they were having an affair for months, and all those times Eliza had been cheating on CJ. The last we heard of her, she was trying to apply to some nearby colleges, but seeing as her scandals were logged in the permanent record, she could not get into any school. In fact, rumor has it that she was now waiting tables in a low-end diner. Meanwhile, Eliza's minions, Jenny and Vanessa, were now outcasts. Considering the role they played in trying to manipulate CJ and all the nasty talks they participated in, no one really trusted them anymore. Thankfully, the student body was accepting of my new relationship with CJ. It helped a lot that CJ was well-liked since they meant that they were welcoming towards him, irrespective of his sexuality. As his boyfriend, I was also extended the same courtesy. Miss Monette, the professor who had exposed Mr. Jasper and Eliza's relationship, was constantly keeping tabs on the student body to ensure that nobody else experienced the discrimination and accusations that I had to go through. She was a motherly figure to whom people can run to whenever they would encounter problems at the university. CJ and I were still roommates. It was extremely convenient seeing as we were inseparable. Our relationship was still blooming and every day I learned a thing or two about the best friend I thought I have known all my life. As I laid in bed that night, extremely grateful for the people I was surrounded with, and most especially CJ. I thought of how that one drunken night changed the course of my life. Drunken confessions were not so bad after all. The end. How do you feel about childhood best friends falling in love with each other? Leave a comment and let us know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.